So I would advise companies to find out that money page. It, it would be different for every single company out there. And then making the goal to like get people to that money page with all the content that you have, rather than getting people to free trials to sign up directly. Before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this episode, Ahrefs. Ahrefs provides you with an all-in-one SEO toolset that does everything from rank tracking to backlink analysis, keyword research, and technical audits. The best part, you can now use Ahrefs Webmaster Tools for free to identify and prioritize optimization opportunities for your website, see all the keywords that your web pages are ranking for, take a close look at the websites that link back to and refer you in their content and analyze other websites to find out what drives their rankings. Visit ahrefs.com awt and sign up for free. And now, back to today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the SaaS SEO Show. I'm your host, George Cassiotis, and today I'm very happy and excited to be joined by Amir Atli. Amir is the co-founder and CRO of HockeyStack, an analytics and attribution platform for B2B. He hosts the SaaS Marketing and Growth Chats podcast, interviewing leading marketing professionals. Amir's impressive achievements include driving more than 1 million impressions and 10K plus clicks per month using SEO and generating 9X ROAS from LinkedIn ads. He also built a media company, uh, which you can find on hockeystack.com slash the flow, gaining 500 plus newsletter subscribers in two weeks. Quite impressive. Amir authored SEO and LinkedIn ads playbooks and a B2B ads swipe file read by over 5K on the flow. Amir, welcome. Thank you so much for the kind intro. Pretty excited <laughs> for the show. Of course, I'm excited too. Um, before we get started, can you please share a couple of things about you and your background? I mean, what has brought you to, to Hockey Stack doing all these interesting things, both on the product side, but also on the marketing side and growth side? Yeah. Um, so I'm Amir. I'm, uh, I live in San Francisco with my co-founders and the reason that why we built hockey stack was we had a couple of other projects that we were working on. Um, we built lots of products before hockey stack. We are builders by heart and always the problem was retention and analytics. And if you look at the analytics landscape, there are like companies that are doing really basic stuff. If you think of like, if you're familiar with Plusable, Fathom, those like simple analytics tools that you can get for $10 per month. And on the other hand, they're like really, really complex products that you need a data team or a couple of developers to set up. So we solved a problem. We built a product analytics tool, didn't work out. We built a web analytics tool that's like compared to Google Analytics, sim similar to Fathom Plusable, didn't work out. And then over time, we pivoted two more times. And then we saw a really big gap in attribution in the way that especially B2B SaaS companies, B2B software companies don't have a way to centralize all, all their data and build reports on top of it. So they're relying on Google Analytics, HubSpot, Salesforce, and then spreadsheets, and all their data are like spread into 10 different tools. So we build it, um, and then we put it into the space to have an attribution, but it's not our end goal. We can talk about that as well. Um, and then we quickly scaled. We recently became the first company to enter YC's next batch. Um, we are a YC back company in Silicon Valley. And yeah, in terms of my background, I'm originally from Turkey and we recently watched a documentary that you can check out. It's about the background story of hockey stack and how we were raising a Citron and got into the YC and then said no to all of the offers that you can check out on LinkedIn or YouTube. So the tool is mostly used by B2B SaaS companies. Any specific mm -hmm. use cases like B2B SaaS companies that are all in on content marketing or that, you know, do LinkedIn ads or that run like Google search uh, ads and so on and so forth. 
so any any specific like um, segments let's say or categories of customers that get the most value out of the product yeah so um we mostly sell to mid-market and enterprise b2b SaaS companies in us but we also have some customers in europe us is a bigger market um in terms of the segments i would say if they have a marketing team of like at least five people that's a really good indicator then probably they have a couple of channels that they want to see how they perform and there's also one or two people that can check out their dashboards frequently um and then if they are running linkedin ads that's a really, really good channel for b2b SaaS. and it's black box because you don't have it's like most people don't click on ads but then they search for your name online and then you see direct have no value that's a really good a signal that you can use Hockeysec. So in general, if you add like 100 people to like 5,000 people, a B2B software company that have a couple of channels and have at least like four or five people in your marketing team, we would be a really good fit. Okay, that's specific. Can I ask you what are some of the most common challenges that B2B SaaS companies that you serve face when it comes to analytics and attribution? And how does Hockey Stack address those challenges? Yeah, so um, the first one is no one knows which metrics to measure. So we helped with that in the first couple of weeks of onboarding. So we get really clear on much, which metrics to measure, which questions to answer, and then we create the launch dashboards. That's the first one. The second one is, so if we think of for SEO, I'm not sure how this would work, but for paid ads, for example, if you want to know if a campaign is working or not without a tool like Hockeysec, most companies, they stop the ad, see if it was working or not from the like AR growth, revenue growth, that's a lot of signups. And if it's not working, if the signups are still the same, they don't turn on the ad. And then if it's de decreasing, they turn on that. So it's a really bad thing. So with Hockeysec, you can see all of the ads and then you can connect the like your spend, your pipeline metrics, your website metrics in one place to understand how different ads perform in terms of close phone value. And the other thing is most companies optimize for signups. They have no clue if the if those signups actually turn into close one. And then what's the sales cycle length? We are with that in terms of organic traffic, no one knows which blog posts, which webinars, which case studies bring you the most close phone value. What's the pipeline value was like? sales cycle length, what are the most common last touch points in terms of content so that you can retarget people with those types of content. And then for um, journeys, if you have a content-based journeys, no one knows if if I have a demo with you, I can go back to Akisak a week later to see if you have come back to the website, checked out our pricing, checked out our cases, if you're still engaging with our brand. Most AEs, most STRs, follow up with every single company they have a demo with without prioritizing the accounts with high intent. Um, yeah, so those are, the, those are the biggest challenges. And my goal as a marketer, as a founder of Hockeysack, is to create a blueprint um, for ads and marketing. So what I mean by blueprint is if you think of, for example, HFs checks out your SCI every single week, but there's nothing like that for LinkedIn ads, nothing like that for Google ads, because every single marketer has a different way of optimizing their ads and ordering the ads. Um, so I want to create a blueprint that will go over all of your processes, optimize your channels, and give you the metrics to measure to over every single B2B SaaS marker. That makes sense. Can I ask you, on the webinars or podcasts or in general activities that happen, that don't happen on the website and are not ads, for example, an in-person event, right? Are there ways in your experience and like, you know, with the work that you do at Hockey Stack to kind of attribute value to some of these activities. For example, I went and gave, and gave a speech at Sastok, right? And some people checked the website and may have, you know, reached out and so on and so forth. Are there ways to, uh, in your experience, to kind of attribute some kind of value to that, to these yeah, activities? So 
Yeah, your case is really niche because you give it speech. So we can use self-report attribution for that. We have self -report. we support self-report attribution too. So they would enter. I heard. Um, I heard George speaking at Southstock, and then we would actually. You can also see their account-based journeys to see if they have engaged with your ads, Google Ads, etc. Before, so you have the full picture. If you are organizing an event, and if you have a list of people attending, you can create a campaign on Salesforce. You would use that campaign, or you can upload that to CSV in top spot as a list, and then we can use that. Okay, so there are ways. Um, I get it. Um, what are some mistakes that you see companies make when it comes to attribution? Um, when they come to you before they start using Hockey Stack, or even after you know they, they started using the tool, what are some common mistakes that you see and that kind of you 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 would advise against um, based on the experience that you have so far. Yeah, so we divide this into we see an industry wide change. So we divide this into attribution one point and attribution two point Attribution two point is what Hockey Sack is building for the whole industry. Attribution one point if you think about it, and you seem a little bit skeptical um, about attribution. You have some concerns, you have worries, and this is why this is like attribution 1.0 is the reason why behind that. So attribution 1.0 is basically giving the whole conversion credit into a single touch point. So you close a $1 million deal, you attribute that to LinkedIn Ads. LinkedIn Ads is $1 million conversion credit. Or you attribute that conversion credit into a team. AE had a demo with the account, so $1 million goes to sales team. In fact, attribution 2.0, what we're building, is about understanding the customer journey. Because when you're thinking about it right now, sales processes are really complex. If you can, any type of control that you can get over this buying experience is a huge advantage for your team. So with this attribution 2.0, our goal is to get as much data as we can. So we launched the podcast attribution feature two weeks ago. With this feature, you can see how many accounts have said they listened to your podcast before? Because if you think about it, when I listen to your podcast, doesn't matter. If I listen to your podcast, matters. So we get that with Gong Salesforce, and then we add it to the attribution mix. So our goal is to get as much data as possible, more than anyone else in the industry, and then creating an experience where you can see how people buy from you, how different campaigns work, how different types of content work, and then getting insights and then applying that to your strategy so rather than getting the commercial credit and playing that credit game internally. The sales team has a credit, marketing team has a credit. That's not the case. That's not the problem. Um, and then I will like, so most people think like product-led is the way, marketing-led is the way, sales-led is the way. I don't believe in any of this type of stuff. I believe that every single team has an equal value towards success. Um, so for every every single team member, Hockeysack gives you visibility. And then every member of the team are aligned, is aligned around the same goals. So one mistake is biggest mistake is this giving coverage within the single team or touch point. Um and then the other one is like aligning on different goals. So sales has a different goal, marketing has a different goal, product has a different goal, et cetera. And then our goal is to align them all under around um, similar, if not the same goals. By showing them, you know, where kind of uh, the value is, right? And I guess in this mm -hmm. context of uh, attribution 2.0, we are looking into a, a kind of multi-touch attribution model. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, then that, that makes sense. Uh, can I ask you, how do you uh, measure the impact of content specifically on the revenue pipeline? And what metrics do you usually focus on or at least advise people to, to focus on when it comes to content? Because the thing with content is that, yes, you have kind of content that has a direct impact, right? Let's say an alternatives page for a, for a software company. Uh, but you can also have a page where people start their journey, right? Um, and this is the indirect impact. So I would like to hear your thoughts on that. 
and also you know what metrics do you advise people to focus on and pay attention to um and whether these are different based on the intent and and so on and so forth yeah so let me first start in doing seo i thought seo or like any type of content is not useful for us because i was mainly looking at the funnel from content to we had a free trial back then we don't have it right now um so i was, ex I was expecting people to check out the blog post and signing up for a trial after two weeks giving up giving us credit card and then i identified a money page which is our live demo we built a live demo before it was cool um we built it ourselves so it's not a tour you can play with it as long as you want it's the actual software actual hockey stack dashboards that you can play um so live demo is present on 85 percent of our close phone value so 85 percent of our actual customers checked out our live demo at least once before contacting sales once i identified that my whole goal became getting people to live demo with all the, all types of content because once they enter the live demo we will be retargeting them we will have sequences for them like emails linkedin dms all types of stuff so we have a really good chance of converting them but the goal is to get them to live demo so i would advise companies to find out that money page that, that would be different for every single company out there and then making the goal to like get people to that money page with all the content that you have rather than getting people to free trials to sign up directly okay so the the idea here is that you identify um a page that kind of gives you very strong signals that people after visiting that page there's a mm -hmm. strong likelihood that they will convert take some sort of action that has a monetary value for us and kind mm -hmm. of try to push people towards this direction through the content that you produce. Yeah. Um, so the first part is, yeah, they have a strong intent. There's a really strong intent. But the other part is we have a, like, we can, so the content is like the, um, like it's holding the prospect's hand along the journey. So if you push people to, to sign up or, a free trial, any type of like sales engagement, then people lose trust in you and the content. So live demo or any type of money page is a innocent way to show your product. And if you make content, like I hate top of funnel content. If you're doing, if you're not doing top of funnel content, there are lots of ways to put your live demo or any type of product screenshots, whatever in your content without making it salesy. Um, so with those type of tactics, you can get people to live demo. And the like, first part is, yeah, these people are high-intent companies. They have a like strong likelihood to buy from you. And the other part is, if you have the necessary pixels, etc., on their on that page, then you you can retire those people, and you can like our live demo is gated. Um, so we have emails, and then we put them into sequences without like spamming them, and we also connect with them on LinkedIn. So once they enter the live demo, we connect with them on LinkedIn and they see my content or my team's content every single day on their feed. And after some time, they will contact sales. So we don't like, we don't have a specific deadline. So once they enter the live demo, we don't expect them to contact sales after two weeks. But it's the long term game. Um, and we don't sell like our plans start at nine, $49 per month. Um, so. It's not like our like sales cycle is uh, five, six weeks. So they will see us on LinkedIn. They will see our content. When they search for revenue attribution, they will see us on Google. And after some time, they will contact sales. What about what's increasingly mentioned nowadays as or referred to as dark social? For example, mm -hmm. someone ask the question on a slack community and you know uh, a member recommended your solution right and then this person went to the website and checked it out and so on and so forth i guess that this would on a website level and uh, until and uh, until this person kind of develops a relationship with us would be considered as direct um 
But then how can you attribute value to, you know, there is a community that consistently sends us people without asking the question inside the product. I'm assuming that the, things get a bit dark or at least gray there, right? Um, yeah, so we closed two deals this month and both of them in 16 days from Pavilion. I'm not even a member of Pavilion. Both of those people put in, so as I mentioned, we, we support self-reported attribution, which is like, if you think about it, dark social equals self-reported attribution. So they put in Pavilion community recommendation in their self-reported attribution form. We booked a demo and then I checked out their account-based journeys. In fact, they have been seeing our LinkedIn ads for over four months. They have, they have seen lots of ads. They have engaged, like they have really good engagement, like over 70% engagement. When I say engagement, it's like clicking on the ad, check out their website or playing on the, like clicking on the play button on our videos on LinkedIn ads. So they have been checking out our blog posts. And the thing that they remember is Pavilion community because it's the last touch point. But before that, they have been seeing our content. So they we built that trust. So it's like, um, yeah, we support software attribution and we also support software-based attribution. You don't need to use one of them. And with dark social, if you think about like recommendations, such that they would put in, in that form and you can also check out what are the other touch points. If it's a social thing, we are doing lots of LinkedIn social, what I'm doing, which would be really helpful for companies as, um, so probably 50, 50, 60 percent of our revenue comes from LinkedIn social. Um, and how I'm doing, how I'm attributing revenue towards LinkedIn social is we get LinkedIn as impressions and engagement every single day from LinkedIn. And this is unique to us. Other companies are doing it monthly. We were the first ones to launch it over like 10 months ago. Um, so I'm getting all the people that have either set LinkedIn as their source on software attribution form or like they have actually came from LinkedIn. So um, the click is from LinkedIn. So I get a number. These are the people that have either said LinkedIn or they came from LinkedIn and then booked a demo or checked out our pricing, whatever. And then I filter out all the people that have never seen a LinkedIn ad before. And then those are the people that came from LinkedIn social. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. So, and then I see this many people have seen a LinkedIn ad and then LinkedIn ad has influenced revenue. So if you spend a thousand dollars, get three deals that have set LinkedIn and then LinkedIn, they have actually seen a LinkedIn ad and I can attribute that towards that spend. And if I see 10 people that have never seen a LinkedIn ad before, but they set LinkedIn or they came from LinkedIn, there's no UTM source so that's linked to social. Can someone, by the way, set up uh, UTMs in, uh, inside uh, the tool? Um, yeah, if we rely on UTMs for ads. Um, I'm just asking, like, uh, I'm not into ads or anything like that. I'm just asking if someone can do it uh, through Hockey Stack, like inside the tool. No, they do it on ad platforms and then we integrate with the ad platform natively. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Are there any activities, though, that uh, attribution software, at least as of today, can track, uh, can track due to the you know nature of the activity or due to limitations in terms of technology, whatever? Um, yeah, so one limitation is people that like, like, or engage with your social content. So from LinkedIn, as we can see, which companies engage with your ads, but not for social, not yet, but I have, I have some plans. Um, and then other than that, for SEO, Google doesn't share search terms. So they land on like a page but we don't know which search term they search for. That's one limitation. Oh, that's because Google doesn't share with any other company. Um, yeah, those are the two ones. Okay. You do a lot of things um, on the content and, and, and SEO and growth in general, I guess, sites for uh, like your own brand. 
Do you have anything mm-hmm. that you can share with us uh, in terms of what works, what doesn't work? I mean, I said uh, in the intro how you managed to reach 10K monthly organic visits and so on. Have anything to share on that end, which kind of is out of you know the kind of the topic of today's discussion, but still relevant uh, for people who are listening to this episode. Uh, yeah, for SEO, SEO was the first strategy that we implemented, um, the first channel, and then we expanded to LinkedIn, and then now expanding into other channels. So for SEO, our, we had a simple strategy, which was like focusing on bottom funnel and mid funnel keywords, publishing really fast. We published like 40, 50 pages for three months, and then down to 20, and then started optimizing all of those pages using Surfer, and we added editor. Um, so that was our strategy. We worked on it for six months or seven months, and then now we are just optimizing, not publishing anymore. Um, and then the best thing that we did is again focusing on live demo visits, and then also putting in pixels of Google Ads, LinkedIn Ads, and then tagging those people. And then right now we are an official six cents partner. If you use Hockey Stack for six cents. Um, you can get it from like you can get out, get access to success using hockey stack and then with that you can identify companies that are visiting your bottom and following, following topics so if you have a comparison page or reviews page um you can see which companies are entering those websites those like pages and then you can connect with them on linkedin you can put them in sequences you can retarget them um and then that's pretty useful so for content or SEO, at least for us, like if you're selling a, this is the example that I give on every single interview, but if you're selling a pop-up software, for example, every single person knows what a pop-up does. It's cheap. You can, like, you can convert people directly from that blog post into a customer. But for us, attribution, everyone has a different definition. Let's say a new industry. We don't have a, like, huge competitor that we can go against. We don't have a Zoom Info, we don't have a six Sense in our industry. So we cannot expect conversions from content directly, direct conversions, last touch conversions. If you have a, if you're in a similar industry or if you're selling a high ticket SaaS, um, retargeting is your like best friend and then also finding out your money pages is your best friend. And then in terms of the brand that you're building, a super exciting project that we are kicking off right now. You probably have seen it on LinkedIn as the flow. Um, it's a B2B streaming platform like Netflix. We have 10 series coming up from our side, and we are also working with influencers that are going to create their own series on our, on the flow. Think of a Netflix style page where you can see categories, different series and different series from your favorite creators like Todd, um, and then we have a diverse marketing in the world series coming up. The first episode is tomorrow. We have can you dashboard it? Uh, me and Courtney, our customer success manager, creating dashboards. And then we have therapy commercials. Bobet, our head of content, is doing therapy commercials. We have skits. We have all types of content. We are building that brand. And then that's the like, most exciting project right we are doing right now. And in terms of other steps that we're doing, uh, we're going to rely more on documentaries and showing you the actual stuff that are happening. Um, and then we will be relying heavily on video because I think video is a feature. Yeah, I agree. That's all very interesting. Um, <laughs> last question I have for you. Where can people find out more, connect and, you know, say hi if they'd like to? Yeah, LinkedIn is the best place. If you search for Amir Atli or HockeySec, and then you can reach out directly Amir at HockeySec.com if you want. That's great. And you can attribute the, you know, any, any post <laughs> ones to, to the South SEO. So, yeah, um, podcasts are working really well, by the way. We had four deals because two people mentioned us on a podcast last week. So that works really well. Um, sponsoring podcasts, I'm not sure. Um, but if people mention your name on 
podcast works too well. Yeah, I don't know. We we both sponsor podcasts. We get on podcasts. We have our podcast sponsored by Asia. So I don't know. I think it's part of the same thing, right? Uh, things are multi-touch. The journey is not linear, and you have to be uh, wherever people may be and uh, just capture that demand. So, Amir, thank you very much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Um, and looking forward to follow-up discussion like this around two, maybe sometime in the future. Thank you so much for having me. Before you go, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this episode, Ahrefs. Ahrefs provides you with an all-in-one SEO toolset that does everything from rank tracking to backlink analysis, keyword research, and technical audits. The best part. You can now use Ahrefs Webmaster Tools for free to identify and prioritize optimization opportunities for your website, see all the keywords that your web pages are ranking for, take a close look at the websites that link back to and refer you in their content, and analyze other websites to find out what drives their rankings. Visit ahrefs.com/awt and sign up for free.